somebody needs to just stand up in anticipation of what the Lord is about to do. And I want you to do me a favor and I would like for you to find someone, perhaps you walked in with them, or maybe it's someone near you that you did not walk in with, but I want you to say something to them. I want you to look at them and I, I just want you to say this. Um, you have no clue what God's about to do in the next 30 minutes. Find somebody else. Tell them you have no clue what God's about to do in the next 30 minutes. And then I need you to put a praise on it if you believe that that's actually about to happen. Sir, in the back there in the, in the gray shirt, you right there, yes, wave. You, sir. Uh, don't look around, you, yes. Yes, you. What size shoe do you wear? 13? Come on down here. Come on down here. Come on down here. Now, I promise, have we talked? We have not talked. I just literally looked over there. Let me tell you why, because the Holy Ghost said, tell him to come here. I love these shoes. I've worn them twice. They still have the paper in them. These shoes represent, for me, something that I wanted God to do. I wanted him to make me a classic man. I wanted him to make me a man that was elegant in my thoughts and, and refined in, in the way I handled business. These represent another level of business, authority, finance. They represent another level of power, another level of vision. It also represents increase for you and your family. And I don't want you to just grab them. I want you to run in them. And I want you to, to walk the path that I started in them but I'm sowing these into you for the next season of your life that's going to reap a million dollar plus harvest for you and your house. Hold on. What size waist? You're 42? He's, oh, you have to tell them that. I just started a business that's in financing. All right, you sit. now what is your waist? About 40, 42. Okay, what does that say? 42. Hold on. Try that on, just try it on. I just have to see, I just have to see because the Lord was telling, just try it on. Please just, just try it on for me. I just need to see. I just have to know that God is talking to me. Here, try this one. Here's what's crazy. Try that one on. And I'm going to tell you something about that one. Just try that on. Please. Yeah. And this one too. You don't have to try it on. These are custom made. And the Lord, the Lord told me to sew them. 30 minutes ago, he said, bring them downstairs. I was like, but they got my name, you know. I'm... And he said, so them. And I didn't know who, and I didn't know how, but you walked in with your wife not knowing that God just wanted to see if you'd show up. And when you walked in, he had all of this waiting on you. And this one too. And that's, that's the, that's the one you walk in when you close the next deal because you're covered. The blood's got you covered. So all of that is for you. And, and I just dare you to, 
Go ahead and shout to God. Matter of fact, you know what? And then go take your wife out in that one and kill her with that one. I just need somebody to give God a praise. Somebody help him with his harvest, please. Somebody help him with his harvest. Help him walk back to his, walk back to the house with your harvest. Now I need somebody to bless God. We hadn't talked. I don't know. All I know is what the Holy Ghost said. It said him. And I just need you to know that you have just left lack. Only one woman is excited about that. You just left lack. Aquanet, you're online. You just left lack. Olinger family, you just left lack. Katrina E, you just left lack. Tina, you just left lack. Patricia Burks, Trish B, online, you just left lack. I need the online community to know that you are in church right now. This is not a game. This is real time. This is a real move of God. And I just need a, I need a praise to break out before we even finish this service. I'm going to give you just about 15 seconds. I don't want the music to make them go. I want you to give God a praise. I want you to sow a praise. Carmen 227, abundance comes to your house. Sierra S, Nikki Vines, Jay Brooks, Joshua Douglas in Shreveport, you just left lack. TJ, you just left lack. The Glowers family, you just left lack. And the Lord is celebrating. How is confetti from New Year's Eve dropping down on May 1st? Five months later? But five is grace. So you just stepped into a season of grace. Oh my God, you left lack and stepped into grace. You stepped into abundance. The title of the message is Intentional Sowing. Gin juice, nay, you just stepped into abundance. Nicole Monique, you just stepped into abundance. Now I need a few people in here and I don't even want you, don't even, don't, no, no, no. Because you know, I know what you're trying to do, Wendell. I know what you're trying to do, PJ. Don't do it. Don't make them shout. I want them to walk right now. Because I need you to know you just stepped out of the thing that was trying to hold you hostage. You stepped out of it. And I just need you to walk around and I need you to take some territory real quick. Always Mrs. Joe Brown, you just left lack. Sharkane, Keila Bluford, Vivian, Cassie, Donna 21. Somebody's getting free back there. I don't know who that is, but that's the sound of freedom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hold on, break it down. What's your name? Stop, what's your name? Joshua, that's your name. How old are you, Joshua? You just turned 13 yesterday. And I just saw you sow. You sowed on faith. Something told you to sow, you just wanted to sow. It blessed me. You're 13 years old and you're learning how to sow into a moment. And there are a lot of people that are sowing right now. But what you sowed, the Bible says that when you sow, there's a return. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. 
I want you to know that the Lord saw what you sowed. So here's your return on what you sowed in real time plus some. You never know what one seed will do for your life. And I want you to know that God is proud of you, young man. And what just happened is you just unlocked blessing for your grandkids and you're 13. You don't even have a clue. Come here, young man, while you walking, I'm gonna have to sew into you too. Come on and take this hundred and walk on back there with the abundance and the anointing of favor and wealth on both of y'all in Jesus' name. Now I feel the Holy Ghost. Lori from Houston. Lori from Houston. Lori from Houston, you're on the Our Relentless Church uh, chat. Whoever's doing the, the chat, Lori from Houston. I don't know who you are, Lori, but the Lord just said that we're, we're to sow $1,000 into you for you and your family. I don't know what's going on, but the church is going to sow $1,000 into you this week. So Lori from Houston, that's in the chat feed right now, there's a seed coming from your church to your house because you were online and you've been faithful and you didn't know that today God was going to call you out because today is the day that you leave lack. And anything you were wondering about, God says, if you were wondering, don't wonder anymore. Because I'm about to shock you with overwhelming favor. Now, I need somebody in this place to understand that you have left lack and have stepped into abundance. Now, I do need you to go ahead and give God a praise right there. I, I feel like there's a shout in the room. Now, I don't know how you shout, but I wouldn't sit still on this. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. chapter 13 Matthew chapter 13 Matthew chapter 13 you better leave me alone I said I said Matthew chapter 13 
Mr. Dante, do me a favor, check your phone. Today is a moment of demonstration. Also, it begins this week. Unexpected increase. God says, I see you've served, you've sown, and you stayed faithful and you did not blame me. And even through pain, you served. You were faithful through the night. It's morning now. It's morning now, Dante. Not only has joy come, but favor has come. And what I was just told to text you, take a picture of it because everything that I said will come to pass. You're, you're about to become an economy. I speak the favor of the Holy Ghost. I speak the favor of the Holy Ghost on this team, on these musicians. I speak the favor of the Holy Ghost, unexpected increase, unexpected overflow, unexpected financial freedom, blessings in business because they are committed to excellence for God's kingdom. God says, you've been working, serving his house. Now he's going to establish your house. One of the men of God just text me. He said, Pastor, you didn't know it, but you just sold into back-to-back -back Joshua's. The gentleman with the clothes and shoes and the 13-year-old boy, the 13-year-old young man, both of them were named Joshua. <laughs> Joshua is where we get Yeshua, the Lord saves. But watch this. Here's the, here's the profound lesson of Joshua's life. He was the servant of Moses. He had no ambition other than to serve. And because his commitment was to serve the man of God, God saw the posture of his heart and elevated the servant to the leader of the nation. Let me help you to understand that if you want to progress in God's kingdom economy, the it is not ambition that will get you there. It is not your talent that will get you there. It is a posture of service and a heart to sow. And if you are faithful in another man's, God will give you your own. And to the spirit of Joshua, because that's the spirit that I operate in. Because I'm still a Joshua to Pastor Joel. I've been a Joshua to every general in the kingdom. There is not one pastor of note in this world that I have not served. And God took me around the world so that I can see and then become something I never could have become on my own. Oh, but I sowed and I never coveted the platform of any person, any pastor that I sowed into. I was faithful. I sowed my best. I preached every message like it's my last. 
Everybody say intentional sowing. No, I need you to say it like you mean it, intentional sowing. Now, I tried to get y'all to go to Matthew 13 10 minutes ago, but y'all don't want to listen. You want to worship Jesus. Matthew 13, starting at the 24th verse. This is Jesus teaching. This is what he says. Another parable Jesus put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Somebody say, sow good seed. Say it again. Say, sow good seed. It's hard to sow good seed. It's hard sometimes to sow good seed because the Lord will tell you to sow good seed in the bad people. It's easy to sow good seed in the good people or people you agree with, but you got to sow good seed into people before they become what they're called to be because that is when you're most like your heavenly father because he sowed into us when we weren't thinking about him. Oh my gosh, I'll leave it there. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Freeze. While men slept. There was a man who sowed good seed in his field. He was doing the right thing. He sowed the right seed. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. I need you to know when you are sowing into kingdom things, kingdom principles, kingdom dynamics, kingdom objectives, you will accumulate enemies. There will be people who will set themselves against you. They will, they will hate you without cause. They will dislike you. But, and here's the thing. Here's the tricky thing about them. They don't look like enemies. Because they don't present themselves in the daytime. They wait till night while men are asleep. When you are vulnerable, when you have less light, less vision, when your defenses are down, here they come so tears among the wheat and went his way. <clears throat> but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owners came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Now, Lord, I don't understand this. You know they're wrong. You know they're wicked. You know what they're trying to do to me. You know what they tried to do to other people. You know, you know the posture of their heart. Why are you doing, why are you letting them grow? Don't worry. It all has to grow together. I'm about to separate it. At harvest time. Six of y'all caught it. One of the elders caught it. I'm about to give you the revelation of it in two seconds. But he said, I don't want you to mess with the tares because it's too close to the wheat. And I need the wheat to stay in the ground a little longer to mature. Let them grow together. And here's what he says. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares that the enemy sowed and bind them in bundles and burn them. You're going to still be rooted. I'm going to take the thing that was trying to choke you out. I'm going to bind it. That means it will, it will no longer have the ability to harm you or your field or future harvest. I'm going to take it while you watch, while you stay rooted. I'm taking it putting it in a bundle, and I'm going to burn it. But gather the wheat into my safe place, into my barn. Somebody say intentional sowing. Come here. 
No, sir, you. Yes, sir, you. With your heavy camera. It's just a seed. You're always somewhere with a camera in your hand, sewing into me. It's just a seed. I love and appreciate you. No. Yes. Yes, it is. Jesus. Jesus. Y'all going to have to forgive me because I got to be obedient. Okay? So if there's a camera that's on me, it has to stay on, on me somehow. I don't know how you're going to do it because I'm walking back to these two camera operators. Come this way? Okay, I'll come that way. All right. See, because they, they work hard and they volunteer. And uh, I just want them to know I appreciate them, both of them. It's just a little C. Love and appreciate you both. Oh. Thank you very much. And other people are going to sow into y'all before the service is over. Aaliyah, I sold into your husband. I'm going to get to you before the service is over. And I got you last week, didn't I? Did I get you last week? Did I sow into you last week? Okay. Let me tell you what I'm doing. Because we're stepping into a harvest. Okay, they missed it, Rashad, so let me say it again. Remember what the scripture says. The wheat and the tear grow up there. He was about to leave. I called him and I said, turn right around. And I mean, sit down. I mean, don't you move. <laughs> he was like... <laughs> This parable says the wheat and tear are going to grow together and the time of separation is at harvest. That's when I'll make the distinction. Not in the process of growth, but at the time when you are about to be given for consumption. People are about to dine on the experiences of your life and you're about to produce because your life is not an appetizer, baby. Your life is a meal. You've been through too much for people to snack on you. You are a whole steak, potatoes, salad, bread. Am I talking to anybody that's been through enough that your life could speak? Who am I talking to that your life is worthy of the respect that comes with the process? That your worship costs you something? The fact that your hands are up cost you something. You've lost things. You've lost loved ones. You've lost a child. You've lost a parent. You've lost a spouse. You've lost the job. You almost lost your mind. And yet here you are somehow with your hands still up giving God praise. Who am I talking to? God is about to bind your enemies burn them in your presence and then set you in front of the world for the world to dine on the experiences of your life. Your anointing is a whole meal. You ain't nothing like a snack. You a whole dinner. I dare you. I dare you to declare I'm a meal. I'm a meal. Oh, taste and see. trying to help somebody in here. They have underestimated your anointing. Who am I talking to? Even your family treats you casual. They think because they grew up with you, they know you. And people, because they saw you at a certain moment of your development, want to minimize the anointing on your life. But the devil is a lie. I've been in the field. I've been in the heat. I've been through the rain. I've been through some mess. And I'm still planted. I'm still rooted. Because I did not sow myself. My Savior sowed me into the field. And this is my season of harvest. Harvest. 
no music. I need you to give God a praise. I need to make some announcements and I need you to write this down if I'm talking to you and I am talking to you. I do need you to know this, that if you're here today or you're watching online right now, um, you're assigned to this moment. You didn't accidentally show up today and I hope that you hear me by the spirit of the Lord, that you were assigned to be here today because apparently there is something that God wants to get to your family for the next two, three hundred years. <laughs> Mommy, I don't know if they understand that God blesses to a thousand generations those who seek him. See, I'm, I'm the, I am the product of a grandmother who prayed. She never had the things that she prophesied, but I am the embodiment. I am the manifestation of what she spoke. She wrote it in journals when I was a little boy. How could she see 40 years into the future, 45 years into the future? God gave her vision. She sowed her life. She sowed tears. She sowed prayers. And some of you are springing up as the harvest of prayers from a hundred years ago. And what you do today and what you sow today and the praise you give to God today will echo, 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 echo into the next generations. I believe that the seed I sowed today will bless my grandkids from my firstborn son and my daughter. I said, they're my grandkids. My, my son and daughter's grandkids will reap from what I sow in the next 15 minutes. And it starts with a praise because everything from my bloodline is going to be saved. There will not cease to be a worshiper in the gray family line. We will all serve the Lord. Anything when my last name is getting into heaven, not one of my seed will go to hell. Everything in my family line is getting into the kingdom. And I bind every devil in hell that would try to hinder the ability of my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren from walking into the fullness of God. I've sown too much. I've cried too much. I've prayed too much. And it will be what I say because my harvest is connected to my confession. PJ, there's too much at stake. You have left lack officially today. It is official. Your warfare is over. You've left lack. It started last week because I started declaring some things last week. And I got people here that are living witnesses that God started doing miracles. We got one member that got a whole building downtown. No money. Don't tell me what God won't do. People financing entire initiatives. Don't tell me what God won't do. We walked into a campus in Atlanta that God breathed on. Don't tell me what God won't do. This is the season you are leaving lack behind. And if I were you, I would not allow my bank account to trick me into thinking that the word is not happening. I'm getting ready to be very transparent. Last week, my wife told me in the middle of service that she was sowing a particular seed. It was a significant seed. And I said, because I'm the head of my house, I'm not going to let my wife sow in faith and I not sow at least equal. And I showed her, I said, is this the amount you, the Lord told you to do this? It's not a tithe week. But if he, 
I said, let's go. What I didn't do, I'm being honest, I didn't realize that I had bills that come through. You know, they just gone in there that, you know, it's automatic with the bill pay situation. Anybody that's got the bill pay, they just go in there. They don't even ask. They don't take you to dinner. They don't kiss you. They just go in there and just take it. Just, you know, it's just gone. It's there. One day you feeling good on Friday by Monday. I what in the Jesus has happened to my account? That I didn't even know y'all did transactions on Saturday afternoons. I don't, how can you just take it like that in the middle of the night? You just came in there. You I sold what had been earmarked for other things and I found myself in the middle of a week with a negative in front of that account. Now everything went through, but I was sitting in a negative. The devil was like, see, that's what you get. You trusted God, now look at you. I said, you're a liar. Because this account is not the truth. This is a moment. It's not the truth. And my seed went through, so I'm good. If there's anything negative, it can wait as long as my seed went through. Because if I got seed in the ground, then harvest has to happen. I wish I had 17 people in here that understand what I'm about to say. I I can have a minus in front of the account because by Friday it will be back in the positive. But I do not live by bread alone. I live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I got leftovers at the house. I got a quarter tank of gas and I can walk if I have to. I need a few people to encourage my soul right through here. I feel my help in here. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I've been believing, Pastor Amber, for a particular miracle. I need God to do it. I need him to do it this week. I hope he does it this week. I hope he hurries and does it. But if he doesn't, my posture has not changed. You are the great God. All of it belongs to you. And when it's my season and my turn, no devil in hell can stop it. Nobody can stop what's coming. And I'm going to keep sowing until harvest comes. And when I get mine, everybody around me is getting theirs. Because I've proven that if you give it to me, I'll give it away. I sold into our security team, sold into some of the leaders, and, and it was church business. And those are receipts that can be reimbursed. The Lord said, do not submit them. I want you to sow it. There ain't no seed when you know you can get it right back. I need somebody to run for me on that one. God in heaven, help me. Elder Buchanan, you don't even know that you just ran into millions. You, you and your, your whole family just, all five of your kids, they just ran into millions. Your, your youngest boy just got a breakthrough. I don't even know what this means, but that boy is getting ready to be labeled a genius. Caleb, your, your children are going to be a worship band. They're, they're writing songs. That little boy is going to grab a guitar like his dad, and y'all are going to write songs that will span generations. I want you to know that you left lack. I'm looking for the 17 people in here and the 100 online that are between miracles. God did something, then it got a little low, and you're waiting on the next thing. I need you to know that this Sunday is the bridge. I need you to sow a praise right now while you're walking because you're walking from one miracle into the next miracle but what you do right now is the bridge to your next thing. So I ask you right now in faith, I need you to walk in praise. I need you to shout in praise. Take about seven steps and thank the Lord.
Lord that everything in your life has been accounted for, that there is nothing missing, nothing lacking. I need you to just take a walk. And if your family doesn't have faith, you walk for the whole family. And I need you to praise while you do it. I need you to keep worshiping. Something is breaking to my niece, Simone McQuitty. Healing to your body. No disease can touch you. No devil in hell can put its hands on you. I speak to every system in your body to come to order. Any autoimmune issue has now been arrested and your body is completely free from sickness. You will live a full span of years and you will be the legacy that my brother Marvin prayed about before he transitioned. Your life is going to be the miracle testimony of what the devil tried and what God finished. He is the author and finisher of of your faith you are healed in the name of Jesus thank you man of God I love you Kaiser I received this seed and I declare that you are a seven figure young man that at the age of 21 you'll be able to sow into your mom and dad and you'll be able to buy them whatever's in your heart I prophesy it into your life Kaiser Hill, and I receive Pastor Demarcus from your hand, and thank you, man of God. And I'm old. Hallelujah, Jesus. Tell somebody, I just stepped into a new season. No, no, no. You, you're, you're not saying it, Pastor Robert. I, I, I just, hey, sweet girl, love you so much. I love you. Come here, sweet girl. Come here, take all that. That's for you, okay? I love you. Here, take this too. I want my babies to know that when they sow, God sees it. I need you to declare three things out of your mouth right now. Say, I'm sowing, I'm showing, I'm growing. I need you to say it again. Put a smile in your mask, and I want you to say, I'm sowing, I'm showing, I'm growing. I need you to get excited about this because this is for, he gives seed to the sower. Oh my God. If I'm in a, if I'm in a moment where the ground is good, I don't need a crop, I need a seed. Oh, help me, God. He gives seed to the sow. I'm sowing. The only way you can sow is if you have seed. But he only gives seed to the sower, which means if you really want to have increase, then you got to be generous now because the only way you get more is by giving away what you have. And I'm not talking money, baby. I'm talking your intellectual property. I'm talking about the posture of your heart. I'm talking about the machinations of your mind. I'm talking about your intellectual pursuits. I'm stepping into a new season. And I need somebody to hear me. The success of the season you're stepping into is directly connected to the soil you're planted in. Yeah. Courtney, you and, and um, where'd she go? Lily, y'all said something to me a couple weeks ago, and you said, God has done remarkable things in your businesses since you've been planted here. Is that what you said? I just want to make sure. Is there anybody else that can say that God has done significant and remarkable things since you've been planted here? <laughs> houses from the ground up, some of you. Businesses, closed on houses, ministry moments, opportunities, open doors. Let me tell you why. I need you to look down. It's because of the soil you're planted in. I need you to just, I need, I don't know how to do, I need you to just try to act like you dig in your feet in the ground. I need you to just, oh, just like that. Look like the twist. The reason why, I want you to dig deep. 
I don't want you to go anywhere. See, the enemy wants you to get out of the soil that's actually producing the harvest for you and your family. Oh, my God. You still over there at that church? Yes, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. In fact, I'm going to dig deeper. You Don't you do it because I'll stand right on a pew with you. I, if, if you got the guts to be a pew stander, I dare you to stand on a pew if you can do it safely. Now, if you fall, it's on you, and I mean, don't sue me. But if you got the guts to stand on a pew, I need you to say, I am a tree planted by the rivers of water. I'm in good ground. I'm in the soil. I'm not moving. I cannot be moved. I'm not here out of emotion. I'm here out of obedience. Stay on the pew for a second while I finish this prophetic declaration. Oh my God, the success of the season you're in is directly connected to the soil you're planted in. Relentless church is good ground. Oh yes it is, because the heart of the pastors is pure. Oh yes it is, I'm going to preach this gospel until I die. This is not a witchcraft house. We don't manipulate people here. If you want to stay, welcome. If you want to leave, we love you. I'm not, I don't have nothing to say, but I guarantee you this. The ones that have stayed, the ones that have sown, the ones that have been pruned are blessed. We're walking in maturity. We're walking in authority. We're walking in abundance. And baby, I look over my shoulders and I got goodness and mercy following me every single day because I... I am in the right soil. Now very safely come down off of there. I need to declare this too. The soil that you are sowing in is also the soil you'll be reaping from. Put this in the chat feed, say it out loud, and six of y'all are gonna run. Your miracle is in the house. God said, stop looking for people that are outside. He said, your miracle is in the house. It's in the room. It's on the chat feed. Whatever you're looking for, God's got it in. Oh, Lord, help me. It's in here. Did you hear what I said? God has the answer to your prayer in here. It might be in a person or it might be in the atmosphere. But whatever it is, you don't have to go looking for it. It's looking for you. I'm sowing, I'm showing, and I'm growing. I'm walking in a level of authority and maturity in the spirit that I've never walked in before. Things that used to bother me don't bother me now. Used to get me off my game, but now I realize you were sown in the middle of the night to get me out of position. You look like wheat, you're a tear. And I don't even have to do anything to you because when I study the rest of the scripture, Jesus broke it down for the disciples. He said, the sower is the son of man. The harvest, the field is the world and the reapers are the angels. He said, and the wheat are the sons of the kingdom and the tares are the sons of the enemy. And the angels are gonna come and gather up the sons of the enemy. Ah, oh, because it takes discernment to know who's who in this season. They look like wheat, but they're not wheat. You sing like wheat, but you're not wheat. You're a tear. Very talented, but you're a tear. You're a talented tear. You're a gifted tear. Great communicator, tear. Educated, tear. Because wheat has the oil on it. I'm in a moment where I'm sowing. And I'm showing, and I'm showing sure enough growing. Do you understand that you're in a house 
where miracles happen every week. No, some of y'all don't hear me. I don't know if you understand, but there's seven people in here getting ready to get new cars, and you need them. Oh, okay, so there's one. She's shouting it. There he goes. Okay. It's always good to know where the Lord's about to do it. And you need a seven-seater for the baby. The baby's coming. Okay. Yeah, I see you running, man of God. It's happening. And just to encourage you, Charles Hall. Come here, Charles. Oh, I'm going to let y'all go in a minute, but this is a service that, that will change your life. Don't go anywhere. Charles, can you tell him about the power of sowing and reaping? So 2011, I gave my car away, my only car. It was a really nice car, and I believe the Lord told me to do it. And now I'm walking in Chicago in the winter. I'm walking to church, catching rides to church, and catching rides to work. So I feel like I, I miss God. And a year later, Pastor John was at this conference I was hosting him at, and during his message, he said, Charles, stand up. The Lord told me to give you a truck. You don't have to pay for it. I'm going to fly you out. And he did such as I am saying. And I wasn't verbose in my communication. I didn't tell anybody. No one knew. Pastor John did not know. And he still to this day didn't know. That's the exact truck that I was asking the Lord for it down to the color. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all Charles! that we ask or think. But wait, wait. Charles! What are we asking for and what are we thinking about? If God is asking you to do something that's crazy, and I'm not asking you to give your car away, but I'm telling you that God sees that seed. Even if people say, man, you're crazy. What are you thinking? Who do you think you got? Who do you think you are? You miss God. I'm telling you, you didn't miss him because the Bible says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. I sold a car and God gave me a truck. I need you to give God a 30 second praise break. He sold a car and the harvest was a truck. I didn't know what you just said that that was the car you were believing for down to the colors, which means when I got the truck two years prior, it wasn't for me. He had you in mind when I got the truck I thought I wanted. There are people that got something that they thought they wanted, but it's yours. Now, let me take this story a little further. You want to see the rest? I sold a truck that I loved, that was paid off, that I wanted. One year later for you, so that's 2012. Two years later for me, or a year and a half later, a man comes up to me at Lakewood Church, and he says, Pastor, the Lord told me to sow a vehicle into you. I was like, well, man, praise God. Thank you so much. And he said, I'm going to bring it to your house. I said, amen. I want you to see what he sowed into me. That's a Bentley Continental GTC. So for all the people who hate on me when you see me driving, it was a gift. Haters. And what you don't know is it should be a GMC Yukon, but I sold a truck. And what David, the man's name is David Emonidier, what he did not know is that was the car of my dreams that I told no one. Because sometimes church people are like, look at you, what are you, you greedy, you, what are you, you, are, you one of them name it, claim it? No, I'm just a man that likes cars. And you're allowed to dream, you're allowed to dream, you're allowed to dream, you're allowed to believe your father owns everything. As long as you don't worship it and treat people wrong to get it. I said, I would love to have a Bentley Continental GTC Silver with tan interior. 
That's exactly what he sowed into me. Paid off. Somebody say paid off. Now, I, this is the first time I said the man of God's name uh, since this happened. And I text him, and he just texts me back because I said, I believe. He said, the Lord told me to sow into you. He said, wherever that man goes, follow him. And, and he was successful in business then. He just texted me. He said, since I sold that, he said, I have made a million dollars in a day. Oh, no, no. He just texted me. So you think I'm playing. I'm going to just read what he said. And somebody needs to shout because if it's happening, uh-huh. Yeah, he said, just this past Friday, I had a $2.3 million day. He sowed into good ground and is still producing a harvest. Now, I don't know who this is for, but I know this is good ground. I've sown into this house. And this is, I bind the devil that would make anyone think this is about getting something from you. This is about getting something to you. This is a real moment. Watch this. The entire point of the scripture in Matthew was not about getting things because Jesus sowed himself. I have not tried to get anything for me. Most of y'all don't know when I said yes to this assignment, I left my dream home. And we stayed in an Airbnb and the Crown Plaza Hotel for three months. We stayed in two rooms in the Crown Plaza because I believe God sent me here buried underground, everybody else living in their houses, and I'm sitting in a hotel. God, did I hear you? You sewing your car and walking for a year. God, did I hear you? Yes, you hurting. Your harvest doesn't come the same day you sow. I just want to talk to the people that sowed a yes, but now you walking in a not yet. I need you to know that you're going from yes to not yet to suddenly. Oh my God, I need 100 people to declare suddenly has come. Put it in the chat feed. I need you to get it in your spirit. I need somebody to take off running. Suddenly has come. It has come. Suddenly is running to your house. Suddenly is overtaking your accounts. Suddenly is showing up in your business. Suddenly. Unbelievable. Thank you, Sasha. I got a text in real time from my wife's assistant. She said, I'm sewing back into you and Pastor Av, and somehow she found our, our cash app. I'm not telling y'all nothing. That's, that's just something she did. Thank you. One of my elders just texted Elder Coleman. Elder Coleman said, my son sewed into you and Pastor Av during the offering today. He did it through the drop down. Thank you, Anthony, wherever you are, young man. And, and, and I've learned a principle because my mama taught me this. When God is moving in moments like this and you're led to do it, you sow. You sow because I want what God is doing in the house to be on my life. But I have also sown into the men and women of God. And, 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 and it's out of obedience. You do it when the Lord tells you to. I'm going to leave that right there. Let me finish this because I, I need to get this word to you. Oh, God, I bless you. The wheat and the weeds grow together, but I need you to stay out of the weeds. The wheat and the tear, the tear is a weed. Tell somebody, stay out of the weeds. Don't let these people bother you. Stay out of the weeds. Let them talk about you. Let them, let them giggle and laugh. God's about to bind them up. Throw them in the fire. Wow. You get harvested to be a meal. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. But you stay out of the weeds. You stay out of the gossip. You stay out of the drama. You stay away from the backbiting. Stay away from all of that stuff. Stay away from the craziness. Stay away from it. That's them. That's not you. Don't let their foolishness taint your character. Keep your heart pure. 
Did you hear what I said? God is, and you're not going to have to do it. God is going to have angels separate y'all. You're about to have an angelic visitation. You can wait. You know, wheat, when the wind blows, looks like it's waving. I need you to wave bye-bye to your enemies. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you. You taught me some valuable lessons. You look just like wheat, but you weren't wheat. You were in my presence, but you never had my heart. Bye-bye. Bless you. Take care. You plotted and planned. It didn't work out. You can do whatever you want to try, but it didn't stop me. I'm still planted. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care, tear. Take care, tear. I double-dog tear you. I need somebody to give the Lord a wave offering. I'm in the right soil. I'm in the right season. I'm with the right people. I got the right leaders with the right heart. I got the right worshipers. Yes, God. Wave bye-bye to the ones that tried to break you. Wave bye-bye to the things that tried to choke out your hopes, choke your joy, choke your dreams. Bye-bye. You be blessed because I'm still planted and I'm still producing. This is the power of God. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. My God. Mommy, one of the elders just said, the Lord laid on him and his wife to sow into you. He left church to go to the ATM and he's coming back to sow into you. So you stay right here. And what people don't know, I believe what that elder is doing, Elder Buchanan, what he's doing is he is the physical, tangible beginning of a harvest in your life. Because at 78 years young, there are things, even though you've been walking with him, there are things in God you haven't seen. And you told me today, you said, I've never seen this before. Neither have I. But I want you to know that what this is, is a return it's your harvest. You sowed your life into raising me. Now God has given me authority to pastor not a church, but a region and reach a nation. Excuse me, nations. Your faithfulness to raise one kernel of wheat. You got one son. You sowed me into the kingdom. And now look at the turn around. Look at the fruit. <laughs> While you are alive, you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so now the elder's coming to sow something into you. And he's just the first of many. But you sowed your life, and I have decided to sow my life. I don't just sow in offering, I sow my life. And what I love about our church, and I'm bragging on our church right now, I said this before and I still believe it's true. Me and my wife are the most, we are the most generous givers in our church. And the reason why that matters to me is because there are other churches that might bring in more whatever, but there's no church in America or in the world that has more consistent, committed, generous people across the board than Relentless Church. Nowhere. Because we all are giving from our heart and giving from our substance, and God honors that. That's why we've been able to pay every bill in spite of what y'all heard. That's why we still here in our church. And this is just one of our facilities. I need somebody to scream it and scream at the top of your lungs. God did it. God did it. I need you to say it seven times. I need you to say it like you mean. Look at somebody say, God did it. And I need you to say it now, not just for what he did in the church, but now I need you to say it prophetically about what he's about to release in your life. I need you to say, God did it. I need you to say whatever it is you're believing for, God did it. God did it. Do you hear what I said? I said, God did it. Mama, put your mask on. Put it on now. I'm not playing. Okay, good. You got your mask on. God did it. Somebody say, God did it. 
vaccine and all, but put that mask on. She's 78. Come on, Jesus. Listen to me. Something, something is hitting the atmosphere. Uh, can I go a little further? Can I go a little further, man of God? Can I go? To the mighty men of God in this room and to the men of God online, you're about to step into a, a position of power and authority and favor that as you speak it, you will see it happen in real time. The reason why our church is healthy is because we got mighty men of God in here. Oh, yes. Did you hear what I said? We, we raise up mighty men of God because there are too many churches that are feminized because they don't want strong men because the pastor wants to be the one to be worshipped. He wants to be the one that's wanted. But I am a pastor that raises up mighty men. I raise up strong husbands and fathers and leaders. I raise up mighty men that ain't scared of nothing. I know my English is bad, but I declare there's another anointing coming on the men of Relentless. Oh, help me. We're getting ready to step into a season of valor. We're getting ready to step into a season of power. We're getting ready to step into a season of authority. We're getting ready to step into a season of declarative anointing that as we speak, demons have to back up. We're getting ready to take territory. We're going to be healthy, anointed, discerning, filled with power. And our families will be blessed. Our children will be blessed. Our wives will be blessed. Our spouses will be... Our houses will be blessed. This community will be blessed because we raise up mighty men. We raise up greatness and we don't compromise the word for any reason. The gospel is right. The Bible is still true. Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the full payment for our sins. He is the only begotten of the dead. He is the firstborn of all creation. Jesus was born of a virgin named Mary. Jesus is the one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I'm closing now with this here. Help me, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Do me a favor. Lift a hand, at least one. The musicians, too. You don't have to play. I don't want you to play. I want you to lift your hands. Oh, Jesus. Lord, here we are. We are relentless. And we are the church. We sow ourselves into your work. I've committed my entire life to the gospel. And all I want is for you to get the glory. Save souls. Heal bodies change lives. Lord, would you ratify this word today by doing unprecedented things in the lives of your people who call themselves family of relentless? Will you do things this week that our ears will tingle I'm praying for unprecedented healing. My niece that I just prayed for, she just texted and said, Uncle John, I sow myself. I'm sowing my gifts and my talents into the house. I'm serving. I'm going to help. She doesn't even live here yet. <laughs> that was the key to this message. Not about the accumulation of things. But Jesus sowed himself into these men for three years because the harvest was you. Do 
Do you understand that Jesus is never recorded giving an offering because he was the offering? <laughs> and you study the scripture, it says when you make your soul an offering for sin, he was the offering. He sold himself. He invested. Anybody in the stock market, you know, some days the stocks are up, sometimes they're down. He invested for three years. On the day that he needed them the most, they bottomed out. They took off and ran, left him. And, and he didn't see a return on his investment until after he died. For unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it cannot produce a harvest. He sold himself. And when he rose, you saw the power of God on those apostles. And he worked unusual miracles. These men were so on fire for God, they were willing to die horrific deaths to give him glory. Yeah, you can behead me. Oh, you going to crucify me? Just don't do it right side up. I don't deserve to die like my Savior. Crucify me upside down. Oh, you going to beat me for the gospel? I rejoice. I've, I'm counted worthy to receive punishment for preaching the gospel. Let me tell you something. Candy preachers will always be popular. Because they tell people what they want to hear, not the truth of what it is. I know what it's like to serve candy. We serving meat and potatoes over here. I don't want to be popular. I want to be obedient. <laughs> Holiness is still right. Listen to me. God is calling our church higher. We graduated today. Jesus sowed himself. And now I say this because I have been instructed to say it. There are people that are watching online and some that are here who are like me that are electronic givers. And it's 111. And I just feel like for somebody, he's asked you to sow something beyond what you've already done. You need to do that. You need to do whatever it is he's asking you to do. Do it now. And if it's, if it's an actual seed and you're in the house and you want to Bring that to the altar. Do that too. But for our electronic givers and those online, this is a sacred moment. I said it two weeks ago that you're one seat away. One seat away. Some of you have already sown it because you heard God. But there's a couple of y'all that's funny. Y'all be trying to play games with God like, well, God, if he says it, then I'll know it's you. Here's the other thing. For the few of y'all that always feel like you never have enough, you have to sow your way out of that. How you, you've, been, you've been alive that long and you still struggling? You've been in church that long, you still struggling with whether or not to trust God with your finances? Grow up, do what he told you, and watch the harvest that comes. I don't know how he's going to do it. That ain't your business. Your business is obedience. <laughs> Hands up. Father, seal this word. Seal it in the lives of your people. Thank you for the heart of Relentless Church. And I ask that before we leave, we find someone in here that we speak life to before we go. Preferably someone that does not look like us. I'm grateful for the multicultural expression of worship. I pray that you will send more white people. I'm speaking it because I want to break the back of racism in the church. I'm going to say it again. Black people always go to churches where there are white pastors. It's just a part of the mindset. But it's very hard, Lord, in our country with all that's going on, for white people to feel safe in places that are predominantly black. And I'm praying that you break that spirit and that you will bring my white brothers and sisters, my Hispanic brothers and sisters, that our church would reflect what the kingdom of God looks like, that we lay down our politics and pick up the cross. 
and that we treat each other with the level of respect and dignity that every human being deserves because that's what the cross did. It made us equal. All the praise and glory goes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here, you never gave your life to Jesus, and we're going together. Don't leave. This is not the day to leave early. You don't have nothing to do that three minutes can't wait on. Nothing. If you're here, you never gave your life to Jesus. You need to do that today. If you're trying to figure out whether or not you want to be a part of the family of Relentless, you know the answer. You need to do that today. We're going to pray this prayer together. Everybody who has the ability to speak, let's pray this together right now. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. I thank you. You are my Savior and my Lord. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, you just got saved. You just got saved. You just got saved. And if you're rededicating your life or you're becoming a member, I need you to do me a favor. In here and online, I need you to text either the word saved or the word member to the number on the screen. Somebody had to get saved today. Lord, I need a harvest of souls today. Somebody needs to get shown up saved today. Our church will never be the same after today. We graduated. I want you to know I love you. I'm grateful to God for you. Thank you, Pastor DeMarcus and others who have sown uh, into me. Is that... Thank you, Audrey. I receive this. May the Lord multiply it a thousand times back into your life. Thank you. I have always struggled with receiving. I'm coming out of that spirit. I've sown my whole life into the kingdom. And I can be trusted with riches because all I'm going to do is sow it right back into the kingdom. I want you to get here next week. We're going to bless some mothers and we're going to do some things and we're going to watch God. And I just pray that you have experienced what I've experienced today. This is a moment where we will never be the same. Thank you to our Relentless Online community, to all of the volunteers and people that work so hard in the control room and sound and lights and just everyone. We love you so much. Hands up. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you. Show you his favor and give you his peace. Now before you go, let me say this. This Wednesday is our pursuit night. This Wednesday, 7 o'clock right here. Get everybody, listen to me, get everybody you know, get them here. Come with a seed of worship and a seed in your hand. Let's start this season of harvest with an expectation and, 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 a, and, a, and a shout and an excitement. Let's kick off May with a bang. This Wednesday, first Wednesday. All right? I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. And uh, tell somebody on your way out, it's your harvest. <laughs>